All right, this is a limiting reactant problem, and the reason we know that is we have two chemicals reactants. They're mixing them. We don't know which is going to run out first. So we're going to approach this limiting reactant problem with something called an ice chart. So the constructed ice chart, you're going to copy the equation again from left to right. You want to really take up most of the page from left to right. Include the coefficients. So 3K2CO3s, 2AL-NO3s makes Al2, and I'm running out of room, CO33, plus 6KNO3s. I really want to write this across. And on the left column, I want to write ICE. ICE stands for initial change and either equilibrium or end. We'll think of it as end for now. And we want to fill this in. And on the initial line, we're going to write how much of each chemical was initially there. So initially, there is no product, so we'll put zeros there. And these have to be in units of moles. So zero moles, zero moles. Now, we're not given how many moles of our initial chemicals there are, so the first thing we'll have to do is convert those into moles. I'm not going to take the time to write these steps out to convert these to moles. If you're not sure how to do that, go back and look. But convert 125... 4 grams of K2CO3 the moles, and 173 grams of AlNO3 3 the moles, and we're going to write these in the space below. So I have about 0 0.90 moles of this chemical, and about 0 0.81 moles of this chemical. So we've written that out. Now we're going to try to figure out which is limiting. And sometimes this is really obvious, sometimes it's not. So sometimes it's the one with less, but not always, because this is being consumed for every three of these, two of these are being consumed. So, yes, there is um, there's less of this, but the this is being consumed faster. So you're gonna guess, and so the guess. Let's let's say we guess the aluminum is gonna run out first. So on the change line, you're gonna write minus all of it. We're assuming it's all gonna be gone. So we say, okay, if all of that's gone, how much of the K2CO3 is gonna go with it? So for every two of these we need three of these. So this is going to lose more. So from a two to a three, you're essentially multiplying by one and a half to get this number. So if 0 0.81 of this is used, you'll need one and a half times 0 0.81 of this. So that would be minus 1.2 moles. So if somehow all of this could react, it would require 1.2 moles of this. And the issue is we don't have 1.2 moles, so this is not possible. It's not possible to react all the aluminum. Therefore, the aluminum actually isn't limiting. So it's okay if this happens. All we're going to do is erase, and we're going to try the other chemical. So even though there's more of this chemical right here, it's used up faster, and so that's why it's limiting. So I'm going to start over. So I'm going to write minus 0 0.90 moles. We're assuming all of this reacts. Now I have to figure out how much aluminum reacts. So here I'm going from a 3 to a 2. So if three of these react, two of these react, so two-thirds, this should be two-thirds of what this is. So I'm going to take 0.9, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 3, and so 0.6 of this is going to react, and that should make sense, it should be less. And is this possible? Well, I have 0.81, so it's perfectly fine for 0.6 to react. So the reactants are going to drop, and this is doable. Now if the reactants drop, the products are going to go up by a certain amount, and they're going to go up by, again, we're going to look at the coefficients. There's a 1 in front of this, so if every two of these produces one of these, if this goes down by 0.6, this is going to have to go up by 0 0.30, half of that amount. And there's a 6 in front of this, so we can do this a number of ways. We can go from here over to here, or we go from here. We can do whatever we want. So if I'm going from a 2 to a 6, this is 3 times the amount. So 0 0.6 times 3, this is going to go up by 1.8 moles. Alternatively, I could say, oh, there's a 1 here and a 6 here. 1.8 has to be 6 times 0.3. So when you're done, a good thing to check is this line here, this entire line, if you divide them all by the smallest number, you should get the same numbers up here, the coefficients, or at least proportional to that. So if I divide these all by 0.3, I get 3, 2, 1, 6, which is exactly what these are. So this is the most important line, and they have to match up. Um, with regard to that. So now how do they finish up? So the this chemical, I had 0.9, I lost 0.9, so now there's 0 moles of that. This had 0.81, it lost 0.6, so there's 0.21 moles of that. This went from 0, it went up by 0.3, so there's 0.30 moles, and this is going to have 1.8 moles. 
Now the question didn't ask about moles, it said how many grams of product will be made, how many grams will be left over. So the last thing I'm going to do is going to convert each of these moles to grams. And again, I'm not going to go through all this process, we're going to need the molar masses. I mean zero moles, that's easy, there's zero grams of this. But then we're just going to convert each of these to grams, so I'll do that quickly, but you're going to use the molar masses of each chemical. Again, the chemicals without the coefficients, because the coefficients were already used for the ice chart, we just use that. So I'm going to convert these each to mole, grams. All right, when I convert all these to grams, uh, what I get is this 44.73 grams of my limiting, my excess reactant left over. I end up producing 70.2 grams of this chemical, 182 grams of this chemical. And that tells me the whole story. Now, a good check is we have this thing called the law of conservation of mass, which says that mass is never created or destroyed in the reaction. So at the beginning of all this, I had 124 and 173 grams of matter, which is 297 grams. If I add up all of these final masses, 44.73 plus 70.2 plus 182, I get 296.93, which within rounding error, we did do a lot of rounding, is pretty much the same thing. So this is a good check. It kind of confirms our answer. So this is an ice chart. It's a really powerful tool. You have to fill it all out in moles, except at the end when you get it back to grams. Practice these, try these, they're tough problems, um, but this is a huge part of stoichiometry. If you can do this chart and figure it all out, uh, you can do most of this unit. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.